David here from Third Coast Percussion. Today we're going to be talking about a piece I wrote called Donner from a set of pieces called Aliens of Extraordinary Abilities. I wrote Donner originally for Michael Bird and the Eastman School of Music Percussion Ensemble, and that version of the piece calls for eight players. I later created a version of the piece for four players, so that Third Coast Percussion could play it. And the versions for eight players and four players are basically identical. Uh, the parts for the players in the four-person version are a little bit harder, because they're covering more of the musical material. But otherwise, the pieces are essentially identical. Like a lot of my music, this piece plays around with a lot of different implied time signatures and meters. And even though everyone is always playing in the same meter and at the same speed, it often doesn't sound that way. Also, like a lot of my music, this piece is exciting and energetic, and so throughout I want there to be a really big uh, sound to the ensemble, but I don't ever want that sound to be harsh or ugly. The marimba in this piece should always be played with a very articulate mallet that can get a lot of sound, like a latex-wrapped rubber mallet. Try a Vicfirth M152 in the lower two voices, and a Vicfirth M153 in the upper two voices. The vibraphone needs a pretty hard articulate mallet, but not too hard or the sound will be harsh. Try a Vicfirth M242 mallet or similar. Speaking of the vibraphone, in the quartet version of Donner, this player has to play double stops throughout the piece, almost always in thirds, and this requires some careful placement of the mallets on the bars. Notice how Pete plays with one pair of mallets in a normal playing area, and the other pair of mallets on the edge of the bar closest to him. This is possible because Donner doesn't require any notes on the upper manual of the instrument. It will take some time to get used to playing like this, but if you practice this way, it is possible to play the vibraphone in this piece with an even sound throughout. From letter E to H in the quartet version of the piece, the vibraphone player can play the lower notes with the left hand, number two mallet, and the higher notes with the right hand, the number three or four mallet. This also takes practice because this is a long passage without any breaks, but note accuracy will come with slow practice. By the way, I haven't mentioned the drums yet. I want a sort of rock and roll drum set sound for the kick and snare in the piece uh, without too much resonance in the drums. A drier sound will allow the drummer to play a full sound throughout without overpowering the mallet instruments. I love how Sean plays this part because it is strong throughout but there are little bits of dynamic shape he puts into the part so that it isn't boring or robotic. Counting and good ensemble playing in this piece can be tricky, uh, but especially at letter H. Everyone is playing in a strange subdivision of the bar at this point, and it can be hard to keep track and stay perfectly lined up. In Third Coast, we tried a bunch of different ways of thinking of the meter here, and we finally decided to feel the music in two. So bear with me while we do a little bit of math here. We're in 1216, so the dotted eighth note gets the beat, but instead of counting every dotted eighth note, we count every dotted quarter note like this. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two etc. Thinking in these bigger beats is a way that the four of us compromise and find a way to count that works for all of our parts. For instance, the low marimba at measure 132 counts the same way as everyone else in the ensemble, but to play their part, uh, they would be thinking of their part as triplet, 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 triplet. This is a little different than how the music is actually written on the page, uh, but it works as a way to count the piece. 
All of that counting and the different rhythmic subdivisions uh, take some time to figure out. And perhaps most important, this piece has to be practiced with a metronome. Each player should practice with a metronome on their own. And then the, when the full ensemble comes together, you need to continue to practice with the metronome all together. Third Coast Percussion still practices as an ensemble with a metronome all the time. Anytime we have a discussion in rehearsal where one person thinks that someone is rushing and another person thinks that they're dragging, we just put on a metronome because it's impartial and it's always right. The only instrument in the piece that I haven't talked about yet is the glockenspiel. It's a pretty straightforward part. Uh, you're basically the timekeeper throughout, so play full and strong, but not too much, or the part will just start to get a little bit annoying. When your pitches start to move around in the glockenspiel part, uh, for instance at letter C, put just a slight emphasis, a mini accent, on the first note each time the pitch changes. I hope you have fun with this piece. It's challenging, but I think it tends to go over really well with audiences. Thanks for watching. See you next time.